Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Procraft, and it's my pleasure to bring you Game of Drones, aka Liquid TLO. He is in the red trunks and he is playing Zerg to the southeast of the Taldor Malta versus his opponent, the Russian player VP's Benqui Roll. He is in the blue trunks and he is playing Protoss to the southwest. It's be a fairly interesting game because it has TLO in it. TLO always puts on interesting performances regardless of whether or not he ends up winning. It's not a prerequisite to have a really, really good game from TLO, I've got to say. That's something that you've got to consider. I think that's the most important thing to consider. It doesn't have to be a win for TLO to provide you with some entertaining nonsense. In fact, he's very good at providing entertaining nonsense. It's perhaps one of his biggest traits. In the meantime, VP Benkwi roll I haven't actually seen before, but r these Russian players are getting kind of scary, as you've probably figured out. The Roxkiss players are getting very scary indeed. We saw Live Zerg, and we've also seen Titan as well do incredibly well lately. So I would never underestimate the Russians under any circumstances. That would, I feel, be a very poor choice on your part. Benkwi roll gets the early scout. Nice and easy, and no reaction as of yet from TLO. Indeed, why wouldn't he? We'll see if he decides to go for the pool first. Most likely he will, considering that he's been scouted first. More often than not, you might see some Zerg players taking a bit of a risk on this map. But is he actually going to go for it anyway? Benkwi Roll will move off to deny it, and I have to wonder if the hatchery can actually go down, and it does not. Denied there by Benkwi Roll, and it's also going to be a forge here. So the risk here is that if you try and go for hatch first, that it gets blocked off if you get scouted first. More to the point, if it's a forge fast expand, it could turn very easily into a cannon rush. So that's really something to consider, though TLO doesn't really seem to care about those kind of things. TLO actually hasn't started the pool, which is a very interesting reaction. What will usually happen here is that the pool will get started as a response to it being pylon blocked, but TLO with some patience here actually puts down the hatchery. But the real risk is that we're now going to see a cannon rush here from Benkwi Roll, which could end this game very, very rapidly indeed. Spawning pool follows that one up directly after that, and the question is, can this cannon rush actually be dealt with? I mean, this cannon harassment is extremely common by, by Protoss to try and prevent this kind of early expand here. And he gets down one photon cannon and puts a second one and a third. That is a mega photon cannon rush right here and a backup pylon. There's basically no way that those drones can break through this. It simply cannot happen. And this may very well be a hatchery denied here, not a good start to potentially here for TLO. There's a cancel just to allow a surround here, but that pylon's going to stay up for quite some time. And the question is how long? As you can see, TLO's going to pull off there, and he's pretty much going to be forced to cancel this, honestly. There's some cancellations here from Benkwi Roll. I have to wonder, he's, having only had a single photon cannon up, it may be possible that... TLO can actually get rid of that before he loses his hatchery, but no, there's the cancellation. And with the second photon kind of coming up there and then immediately cancelled, and a mystery expansion up to the top here by TLO using that scouting drone to actually create a hidden expansion all the way across the map, which is a little bit risky. It's going to be difficult to defend if Benkwi Roll is actually able to find that. And he turns that into a double expand up to the top as well, so moving his entire base, I feel, probably up to the top of the map here. You want to leave his tech buildings in his main, one, because it's the most well-defended position, and secondly, because if you don't put your tech buildings there, then that tends to cause the opposition to go and scout to where you've actually hidden them. Two more gateways going down at the front here to uh, complete the wall off here for Benkwi Roll. There's no real way for the Zerg to get through there yet, and an immediate Roach Warren for the Game of Drones, aka TLO, an intriguing decision. Now, Benkwi Roll did spend quite a lot of resources, and he's going to end up losing two pylons plus a cannon to these Roaches, and if they're well microed, then TLO shouldn't actually be losing too many of them at all, if any. Benkwi Roll is able to sneak a probe into the base, and uh, he's going to get a full scout here and see everything that is coming up. Roach Warren is well, but there's nothing you can really do about it. He's going to lose 200 resources plus 150, 350 resources, and then there was, of course, the loss of the minerals from cancellation. So one has to wonder how much Benkwi Roll has actually lost up until this point. You can see 173 resources, the cost of cancellation, and then another 350 on top of that. Quite a bit. Now, Benkwi Roll is keeping an eye out, seeing what exactly he can find, and looking for potential hidden, hidden hatcheries, and He's not going to find one there. I have to wonder if he's actually going to scout up there. If he does, then is going to be in a lot of trouble. It's going to be difficult to actually defend while being that spread out. Check what lava he's actually using here. Just droning up and 
Hasn't even got a, another queen out yet. I think it's just his resources stretch so much because he's having to build roaches in order to break this contain here and allow him to grab his natural when need be. In the meantime, Benkwi Roll is sitting in a nice solid position. An interesting decision there by the game of drones uh, to not actually go directly for these units here and for these buildings. I have to wonder if he's going to try a bust. It looks like he most likely is. I, think he, I don't think he really has what he needs to make that work. Two cannons at the back, a few zealots there as well, and stalkers coming out on the way. Stalkers, needless to say, outrange roaches quite significantly, and behind a wall off, they're pretty much unstoppable. But we'll see. Can he actually do some damage with these seven roaches? Turns around immediately, deciding perhaps he can't, and looking to perhaps catch that probe out of position. Hasn't really done much with these roaches thus far, and a transition here to double Stargate play for Benkwi Roll. Not as surprising as you might think, honestly. There's a lot of tactics that do involve going for Stargate on this map, especially if you've got a successful Forge Fast Expand. And uh, now he'll be looking to shut that cannon down before he loses a roach, which won't be a problem. There's a nice little bit of micro, and down it goes. So, a bit of a cash-in here for TLO. However, he's going to have to deal with the double Stargate that's coming his way after that. Now, here's the question. What does Benkwi Roll know? The answer is nothing. He doesn't know about these two hidden expansions. He has to suspect something by this point. There really is no way that Zerg can stay on one base this long. Not against Protoss. So unless you're going to go for a bust, it just can't work. And even then, going for a bust at this level against Forge Fast Expand, probably not worth it. In the meantime, what are we going to see from TLO? Now, the last time we cast TLO, we saw some excellent Ventral Sacks play, so I have to wonder if we're going to be seeing that again. I think that's very likely, considering Ventral Sacks is on its way. Sounds a little bit obvious, but more to the point, what kind of Ventral Sacks play? What we saw from TLO was using the drop ability of the Overlords in order to micro his roaches and actually get them out of harm's way, as opposed to getting Burrow and Tunneling Claws. Of course, bear in mind that that stuff can actually be detected as opposed to ventral sacks, where that is irrelevant. State of the economy is currently in favor of TLO, if you can believe that, after all of that blocking at the start. Simply being able to mine from these two hatcheries and drone up uncontested is giving him a significant benefit. In the meantime, though, it is going to be mass void rays from Benkwi Roll. He's going to have two and another two up already, and then he'll follow those up with phoenixes in order to grab queens, start sniping off overlords, and give him an overall good sense of air control. Ooh, some risky stuff here by TLO actually doing a large drone transfer across the map. It's a good job that there wasn't anything scouting. In fact, as regards to map awareness, Benkwi Roll basically has none of it. He's now moving out to uh, try and deal with whatever he can see. And, ooh, there's a quick pickup. And I wonder, if, did Benkwi Roll actually see that? The question is, which overlord are the roaches in? Benkwi Roll doesn't actually know. There's no way to really tell. However... Game of Drones needs to get the hell out of there. Now he's aware that there were roaches in the dropships, and I say dropships, so drop blobs more to the point, but what kind of answer does TLO have to the fact that all of his overlords are getting ripped to pieces? He's going to have to get those back up immediately. In the meantime, he's not going to be able to build any hydralisks. because that's the worst situation that he could possibly be in at this point, having lost a ton of overlords there to that air force of the Protoss. In the meantime, he's going to go for a full-on bust, and he may actually have the numbers to make this work. Going straight for the forge here, and he'll break through it with one more salvo, and then moving his way into the base. In the meantime, we see this massive harassment going on here by Benkwi Roll with that huge force of air units. Good force field play there by Benkwi Roll, and able to smash his way through a few roaches, but there's still an awful lot of goddamn roaches right there. Cannons going down as well, and Tier Yellow finds a way in, overrunning that base at this point in time. In the meantime, that Void Ray tried to defend as much as it can, but a single Void Ray doesn't kill that all that quickly. In fact, Benkwi Roll actually seems to be completely distracted right now, dealing far unable to multitask while dealing with this massive attack here by TLO. TLO's Roach is smashing their way through the expansion of Benkwi Roll, and his probe count is falling rapidly. In the meantime, Benkwi Roll are back on target, trying to harass as much as he can. A Spore Crawler is being redeployed, but they will be annihilated before they're able to get into position by the looks of it. These two hatcheries are going to be what really determines it here for TLO, and more and more roaches getting picked off here by that Void Ray and Immortal, and eventually this harassment will actually end. The question is, what is on its way? A couple more roaches scurrying across the field, and Benkwi Roll actually forced to pull back at the risk of taking yet more damage to his base. There's another roach drop down to the bottom here, and let's see if they're able to pick off anything. That is something of an artosis pile on there. I'm sorry, I can't say that. That's trademark. Whatever the case, it's something of a pylon that powers two buildings and nothing else. 
Whatever the case, that was not a successful little attack there by him, but all of the harassment and the damage they did to that natural is going to make the difference. In the meantime, a rather unusual composition of force, immortals and aircraft and a few stalkers now moving across the map, eliminating more and more overlords, and there is, well, it looked like a drop, but that overlord's actually being used for scouting purposes. I think it's got nothing in it. Still, Benkwi Roll has not actually spotted those two hidden hatcheries, which is what's keeping a TLO in the game, having taken significant damage there, but his drone count is still high. Now the Hydralisks are getting to be masked up. There's not enough, I feel, to deal with the size of this force, and Benkwi Roll is going to start to warp in more and more units. TLO keeping an eye on things with this Overlord over there, and... Hmm. TLO's going to have to be a little bit cautious here. This force is dangerous. Hydralisks are a good answer, but not if you don't have a lot of them. They're very, very easily picked off. Not exactly strong units. A couple of spine crawlers coming down, and Benkri Roll has had enough. He wants to go for it. Picks off the spine crawler, no problem at all, and a little bit of Hydralisk fire coming in right there. And will he be able to get a good concave of fire? Looks like he will be able to. Quick pick up and go from all of those Phoenixes. And that's the problem with having Hydras. They're so easily grabbed and taken out of the game, but drones moving in as well. Unfortunately, that did not break the siege right here of Benkri Roll. Still, however, there are more and more drones being built up to the top, but this force is looking really, really lethal right here by Bankry Roll, getting larger and larger. A lot of drone damage being done, and in fact, not even actually mining here. Supply blocked once again. The number of overlords slaughtered in this game has been massive. Bankry Roll looking for another push. Will he be able to get in there? That's not a nice-looking force, honestly. That's very, very dangerous. That's not enough Hydras to deal with it. You'd have to get an amazing concave to do good damage here. Drones now moving and trying to herd those forces away, but a huge warp in. This is the real concern that I've got. He's not going to be able to hold on to this base at this point. Benkri Roll's got, just got too much. TLO now picking up all of his forces and trying to evacuate. Will Benkri Roll actually see it? He doesn't. Very stealthy work right here by TLO, hopping over to the top base. Now I've lost a lot of tech, but he can rebuild from these bases here. TLO still in the game at this point. Things are looking very, very ugly for him, however. He's lost a lot of tech. He did at least start rebuilding the Hydra Den. My concern is that those overlords are going to lead them right to that base. I have a feeling that Benkri Roll might end up getting that, but look at that. Hydra's dropped down, and that Phoenix Force annihilated quite nicely there by TLO, and even a transfuse onto the overlord. He's actually going to go straight for the base. He very well might. He's managed to build some more units up to the top, and the drop forces of TLO now moving across the map, but they're picked off! Oh my! That was the majority of TLO's army just torn out of the sky right there, and there's only five units in there, five Hydralisks. It might be enough to do significant damage, but I feel this, uh, just one warp in would deal with it, and now Benkri Roll's looking around for those hidden bases, and now he finally discovers them with that Phoenix. In the meantime, five Hydras now moving in to try and do as much damage as they can. How much damage can they do? More to the point. Picks off uh, two Zealots and a little bit of Stutter Step Micro being used here. Unfortunately, ends up losing a Hydra, not able to pick that one up but in time. And I have a feeling that TLO is about to go out of this game, unless he can hold on here. Does he have enough forces? I know he's got 16 Hydras, he may be able to. I guess we're about to find out one way or the other. Yet more damage being done as these drop Hydras moving and trying to pick off production facilities, but that is a massive army coming in right here from Benkri Roll. Are there enough Hydras in there to try and actually stop it? He is doing massive damage while Benkri Roll is not able to respond properly. Needs to keep all of his units alive, however, a concerted push by Benkri Roll would destroy him here. The Hydras once again now moving into the mix, but a big warp in will destroy that harassment force. Benkri Roll continuing to hammer on the door, and the supply count is looking very, very grim right here for TLO. I don't know if he's got the units. I really, really don't. He's got 16 Hydralisks, and that really is about it. He's about to lose that expansion as well. Once again, moving in, but Benkri Roll with good control. Drones coming off the line as well. How many units are available there? Two Hydras to harass later on, but still, he's taking a pounding. Once these Colossus get into the mix, this might end up being game over for TLO here. Another unit picked off. He holds onto that quite nicely. The hatchery remains alive, but uh, another solid warping going in here from Benkri Roll. He's not mined out yet either. Single Hydralisk being moved into a harassment position to try and pick off probes. In the meantime, Benkwi Roll is not distracted by that and has taken another expansion down at the bottom. TLO just hanging on with everything he can. As soon as that Colossus comes up there, I feel that this might be game over. As I've said before, Colossi have a tendency of ripping through Hydras very rapidly. In the meantime, yet more harassment. This <laughs> great little bit of drop harassment here with those Hydras. Good micro control. The problem is there are still 42 probes. He's not doing enough damage. Oh, a nice quick pickup and go once again there by TLO. 
some excellent micro control. It's absolutely incredible stuff, but unfortunately, while it certainly has a lot of flair, I have to wonder if it really makes the difference. More warpins coming in here from Banquiry Roll, and now there's a Colossus in the mix. This is where things start to get really ugly for TLO. All the drones now coming off the line, they'll be annihilated in a couple of shots from those Thermal Lancers, and that's good force field positioning there from Benkwi Roll as well, preventing a good arc of fire from TLO. He's now down to 50 supply, falling rapidly. Unfortunately, it looks like TLO is going out of this. GG, ladies and gentlemen, and a brave fight there by TLO, but Benkwi Roll takes that in a good display of two base Protoss there. Good control, good harassment, an interesting unit composition as well, going for the double Stargate with Immortal on the ground. Very, very difficult to stop. And regardless, some excellent dancing micromanagement there from TLO. I certainly was impressed by that. But there you go, folks. TLO unfortunately concedes that game after an excellent set.